Howdy, everyone. Welcome. A uh, huge thank you to Patty and Stephen and Noel and everyone here at Web Summit uh, for having me. It's quite a pleasure. This is actually my, my first time speaking here. And we have an incredible, incredible amount to get through. So I have gone ahead and tweeted the URL for these slides, but you can find them here, bit.ly SEO in 2018. I'll have that URL up again at the end of the presentation if you need it. So all right, maybe you saw this. This, this graphic uh, went viral around the web. It was from a company called Parsley, which uh, has web analytics on a bunch of major publishers' websites. Don't take a picture of it. It's wrong, super wrong, very misleading, incredibly misleading. Why is it misleading? Because Parsley is installed only on you know, a, a handful, a few hundred major publisher websites who get a ton of their traffic and do a bunch of their optimization work for Facebook. And not all of them are great at SEO. So I decided, I figured, if we're going to dispel this myth, how are we going to do that? We need to look at real data. And so I, I contacted a company in California called JumpShot. And JumpShot monitors clickstream level data, which means at the browser level. At the browser level. So it doesn't matter if you're using a secure browser. It doesn't matter if you're in incognito mode. It doesn't matter what browser you're on. They see every URL that everyone visits. They anonymize it, and they aggregate that data. And here is real numbers, real numbers about where web traffic comes from. Right? So these are basically the leading refers of traffic to all websites across the whole internet. Holy shit, Google is big. Holy shit. That is scary. They own more than half of all referral traffic. They're, they're, they're like everything. But not all refers are sending traffic equally. So Google, you can see here, they distribute traffic fairly evenly. right? But Facebook is very strongly biased to the top. No wonder Parsley's data suggests that Facebook is dominating all these traffic, because a few major publishers are getting a ton of that traffic. And everybody else, all of us, right, with our small sites, we're down in the tail. Reddit and YouTube, even more so, even more so. Uh, on click-through rate, so I asked Jumpshot, can you send me all the data that you have on, on click-through rate for mobile versus desktop? So let's say you perform a Google search in mobile. On average, across you know, billions and billions of searches, 2% paid, 41% organic, 57% no clicks. Google solves the search before anyone clicks. Now, what's coming up is going to blow you away, though. OK, so here's, here's desktop, because uh, desktop's still about 45%, 46% of all, of all Google searches are here. So 2.8%, about 50% higher paid about 50% 50 50 higher on organic and considerably lower on no click at all, right? So the click-through rate here suggests to me that desktop is still actually sending more search traffic out than mobile. So mobile is bigger in terms of searches, but so many people don't click at all on mobile. Google solves the query for them that I think desktop is probably still a bigger refer until probably for another year or so, and then, then mobile will top that. All right, what about how we all behave in search? So uh, I wanted to know where people perform their searches. Is it mostly on Google? Is Amazon starting to take a bunch of search? What about Facebook search? Is Bing doing anything? There you go. So here's, here's sort of a look at that. And you can see, do you see something that blows your mind? Do you see one that, that you're like, no, there's no way. It makes no sense. You can just yell it out. Google Images, how, how, what? What is going on? OK, so I have a theory. You know how you go to a bar with your friends, and you're like, that guy, that server looks kind of like Tom Cruise. And then your friend is like, what are you talking about? That server uh, looks like some other actor. And so you both start searching. And you're like, see? See? It's this one. No, no, it's this other guy. I think that's what it is. No. Uh, actually, it, in fact, do you, <laughs> do you see something else crazy? So this is October right, versus, versus May. We, we, think, we think this is actually this is the US data. We think this is Halloween. Because we looked at all the search queries, and they're like, everyone is looking for costumes. Is Halloween big in Portugal? Getting there? Getting there? All right, excellent. I'll come back next Halloween 
I dressed as a big dinosaur this year. It was, it was amazing. Uh, this is compensated for by, by a rise in Google Local. So, uh, and these two I'm keeping an eye on, because if we see this trend keep growing, I think that'll be quite interesting. This is what's crazy. So remember I said Google, you know, a ton of Google searches are uh, uh, not clicks. And Google is still the leading driver of traffic. And Google is growing at a rate comparable to what they were growing at two or three years ago. So Google is big, they're dominant, and they keep dominating more and more, which is, which is just insane to me. Incredible. Uh, here's that click-through rate breakdown. So if you're wondering, wait, is Google taking all my traffic? No, it doesn't look like it. Right now, it looks like you're still OK. The click-through rates have been fairly stable. So Google made their ads a lot more subtle. They put in a lot more instant answers. And yet, click-through rates staying fairly stable. That suggests to me that people are still very biased to organic, just like you can see here. All right. Uh, whoops. So let's talk about SERP features. Uh, these, these types of features, right, and results, like everything but the 10 blue links are nearly universal. Uh, and they impact click-through rate. They can impact click-through rate pretty heavily. So this search for what to do in San Diego, we think that's getting around 38%. 38% of the clicks are actually going to these organic style results. The rest is going to all this other stuff on the page. So that's, that's taking a ton of share. Lots of features like this are removing what I'd call classic SEO opportunity, right? So, you know, uh, the airport data, the, the movies, the instant answers, the featured snippets. Uh, but there's also a lot more opportunity because you can do SEO and show up here. You can, you can do SEO and show up in pretty much every single place in Google's results that are not the ad results. So you want to be here? You can do it. You can, you can do SEO and get in here in the YouTube video results. You can do SEO here and get in that featured snippet. You can do it here and get into the, the scrolling one box. Uh, you can get into it here, into Best, best Pizza in, in Tokyo. You can get it here in the App Store, right? You, I have, there is no way I have time to talk about how to get into all of these, but in the slides, I've linked to all the types of SERPs and the how to get in. So you can, you can go to the slide deck and then click these and it basically sends you to the, the pl place that I think has the best information on how to get into each kind of result. Uh, here's, there's, there's 16, so eight more. OK. We're also moving from what's classically known as results into answers. Answers, right? So lots of queries, we talked about this, don't get any clicks at all. So we think this, weather searches, get like less than 25% of uh, people actually click. Google answers it answers it for you. So 49% across mobile and desktop combined get no clicks, basically half. Why is Google doing this? Why is Google sacrificing what could be millions, if not billions, of clicks on their advertising results and providing instead an instant answer? I mean, this is a high cost per click, right? Booking.com, uh, uh, you know, we just heard from their CEO, they're probably paying eight dollars a click, maybe, maybe a little less, maybe seven. But for something like this, very expensive. Why would Google answer their own query right in here and take away clicks from ads? It seems crazy. I, I think they're willing to lose a lot of revenue because they know that it addicts people to search. The more searches they answer right in the results, the less the less any of us go anywhere else on the web for our answers, right? We just turn to Google again and again. Yes, the Jeopardy guy, he's adorable. I don't, I don't know if you've seen him. He's, it's a very strange contestant. OK. Uh, ads can actually be answers, too. So you see, here's a bunch of examples of those, right, where the ads are essentially answering the query. I think that might be where Google is trying to take advertising and what we can expect to see in the PPC world. In organic, if you want my like one thing that I should pay attention to, what should I do, Rand? Featured snippets are it. They are a huge percentage of uh, uh, search results right now, and they drive a tremendous amount of traffic. They look like they would take traffic away, but they're actually sending a lot more traffic. Featured snippets are also how Google Voice gives you answers, right? So if you ask Google a question, your Google Home device or your Android device, uh, you ask them a question, 
they will give you essentially the text that's in this, in this featured snippet right here. Uh, these card style results, also on the rise. Uh, so you can see a lot more of those. And if you want to get into those results, uh, Dr. Pete from Moz has written a few great pieces on how you can do just that. Another big topic that I want to cover about Google's change in sort of across 2017 and into 2018 has been this move from I express my intent through search words to Google implies exactly what I mean before I even have to tell them, right? So it used to be the case that query terms, words and phrases that, that we would use, determine the results. But Google can sort of figure it out. Do you ever have that creepy experience where you, you land in a city you've never been to, and you're in a hotel, and you start searching for you know, some random uh, store in a neighborhood, and Google auto-suggests it, and you're like, how do you know I want that? How could you possibly know that I want that? And the answer is, well, because lots of other people from your country, from your region, who have your type of phone, who've done your type of searches before, who land in this hotel, tend to perform that search. So not quite as creepy as you might worry about. Uh, we think Google's using a few elements here. Location, prior behavior of users in the location, device attributes, search app and browser history, uh, Gmail behavior, sometimes at least, uh, and temporal elements, so things like what's trending right now versus what's uh, not trending, what's popular, and time-based patterns. So on the weekends, you get certain patterns. On weekdays, you get different patterns. Different people, obviously different results, right, in different locations. So if I'm in Seattle and I search for beast, they're suggesting beast mode, which has to do with our sports team and uh, uh, our, our NFL team. And if, of course, if I'm in Northampton, I'm getting Beasts of the Southern Wild, which is a movie that was popular. Uh, this is not just true of Search Suggest. Whoa. This is rankings, too. Sorry, a little mic trouble there. OK. So for example, I perform a search for Storm in Seattle, and I get our women's basketball team, uh, the WNBA team, the Seattle Storm. In San Diego, I get the comic book character, right, Storm. Uh, in this becomes a problem for marketers because uh, if, you, if you are performing searches and Google is already suggesting things based on what you want and what you've done in the past, marketers have a big dilemma about how to do SEO. I'll show you an example of this. So I, I stumbled across this article about this resort in Japan, which is amazing, by the way. And, and uh, when I visited Japan, right, by the time I'm, I'm uh, going there, Google has already seen me visit this website. They've seen me search for it before. And so everything that I do, I'm sort of being retargeted, and, and, and my search suggest is being biased. And so by the time I reach evaluation phase, right, when I'm like deciding what to do, it's too late for anybody else. Their competitors are, don't have a chance. They can't rank for me in my browser, right, because of what I've done in the past. And so, when this happens, if Google becomes a suggestion engine, right, then, then marketers only really have two choices. We either try and capture attention before, before people start searching on their problem, right, when they're unaware, like, like that resort did through the Men's Journal article, or we have to compete when, when they've already been biased to somebody else who captured them here. And that is a really hard thing. I think this is going to be at the crux of the problem set SEOs have to deal with in 2018 and moving forward. Just, just super challenging. Fair enough. That is a reasonable question. So I'm going to try and answer, like, all right, how does Google's rankings actually work? The organic results, how do I get number one? Let's do that. So basically, it's these eight things. And I'll, I'll walk you through uh, each of them with, with just a little bit of detail. So first off, content, uh, it is very, very important that Google's now machine learning based uh, algorithms that, that analyze content and text think that you are actually going to have relevance to the searcher's query and to their behavior. If you don't, you're not going to perform well. So it's very, very hard to rank for an informational query, like I want to learn about this thing, with commercial content, I want to sell you this thing. 
tons and tons of businesses I know want to rank for an informational query with content that sells, and Google is not going to do it. I don't care if you have every other signal working in your favor, not going to happen. You've got to match their intent. Links are still a huge, huge part of Google's rankings, especially in competitive spaces. The more links you have from diverse sources that are editorial, that pass good anchor text, the better you'll tend to do. Uh, in terms of query satisfaction, so this is one of those ranking factors where Google uses uh, a lot of user behavior. So for example, Google can say, you clicked on a result, or you, you performed a search. You click a result, uh, result number one. You get to the page, and then you click the back button. And lots of people do that. They click the back button and they choose a different result. Well, over time, Google learns we did a bad job. We did a bad job with this result. We need to serve up something else. And because of that, they can really get to satisfying users. If lots of people quick the, click the top result and never come back to Google and never search again for that topic, Google knows you got a great answer. So if you don't do that, if people bounce, they go back, you're going to lose out. You're going to tend to lose rankings. Keywords, still crucial. This is 2017. We've probably been talking about keywords in SEO since 1997. They still matter. You, if you, you don't need to stuff them in, but using them intelligently in your headlines, in your title element, in your meta description tag, still drives clicks and serves searchers and serves Google well. Uh, domains. So if you're thinking to yourself, Hey, Rand, should I put my new content on this subdomain or this other new domain rather than my main site? No. God, no. Why would you do that? Google essentially looks at a domain as, as an entity and says, the, it deserves these ranking signals. You know the biggest mistake I see startups making is? It's mystartup.com and blog.mystartup.com. And every time someone moves blog.mystartup.com to mystartup.com slash blog, their rankings go up, their traffic goes up, and they're like, well, why didn't anyone tell me? I'm telling you. User experience. Google wants an easy to use, intuitive experience on every device at every speed. Got to do it. Uh, and technical issues, of course, still a big issue. Uh, we need to have accessible sites that bots can reach. And the last one is personalization, which is what I talked about, capturing users before, before they're in evaluation phase so that you can win. So my last slide that I will leave you with is a checklist, a brief checklist. Solve the searcher's task better than anyone else. Be accessible. Don't hamper bots. Do your keyword research. Look at how your users actually describe what they want from you and use those same words in your content. Be intelligent about topical use in your content as well. Make sure you are proving to Google through your content that you solve that searcher's query. Make sure you're fast and responsive on every device at every speed. Target the right features. SERP features are taking over a huge portion of the rankings. You need to make sure you're in them. And last but not least, earn more and better editorial links than your competition. You will win. Thank you very much.